Please rise. Our entrance in is 10,000 reasons. It is in your pews.
Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I should like you to be free of anxieties. An unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But a married man is anxious about the things of the world, how he may please his wife, and he is divided. An unmarried woman or a virgin is anxious about the things of the Lord, so that she may be holy in both body and spirit. A married woman, on the other hand, is anxious about the things of the world, how she may please her husband. I am telling you this for your own benefit, not to impose a restraint upon you, but for the sake of propriety and adherence to the Lord without distraction. The word of the Lord. Even theology uses uh, such a term, or happy fault. 
It is not that God wants to enslave a person. Rather, he permits us to sin to show for the grace and mercy even more clearly. Nor will God's mercy be um, experienced by a man who thinks he is a walking perfection, who no longer needs God. Recall that even Jesus was not able to convert every heart because quite a few claimed that they were doing well on their own and did not need God. More than once in my priestly ministry I have heard such statements from people What do I have to confess? I didn't kill anyone I didn't steal from anyone, I didn't specifically harm anybody. I always gently share with them, even the greatest, greatest of saints often confess their sins frequently and they had something to confess. Isn't it true that during the night we do not see if our clothes are clear or not. Rather, it's only seen when we approach the light. In a dark room, I won't notice the stains. It's not only when you turn the light on that you can see dirt. The same is true on our conscience. If someone moves away from Christ, he stops noticing his sins, because there is no light. I think that in such a situation, there is only one piece of, of advice. Enter the confessional, and before Jesus Christ confess that you have stopped seeing your own sins. I should also point out a completely different reason that causes many people not to enter the confessional. Paradoxically, from an exaggerated honesty about God. People sometimes uh, may say, why should I confess my sins when I know I'm going to commit the same sins again? I'm going to lie again because it is difficult for me to live uh, without lying. I will again have impure thoughts. It's an argument seemingly very logical and testifying to one's honesty with God. I was talking with an older, wiser friar in my uh, prior in my community in Poland. Uh, one time about constantly uh, confessing the same sins. He gave me an incredible advice. After all, is the windshield going to get dirty again anyway? And for what purpose do you turn on the windshield wipers in your car when it's raining? If you don't turn them on, your car ride might end tragically. In order to see the road and to arrive to your destination, you have to clear the windshield. And it's not like we wash it once and we don't do it again. The same thing can happen within our hearts. The heart and soul that is not washed repeat repeatedly in the sacrament of confession after looking at a good examination of conscience like uh, the kind we brought with us uh, which are in the bulletin where that person can easily lose a spiritual sensitivity to God and even to those around him. Every person who strives for holiness embarks on a journey to grow in humility, sometimes by confessing the same sin dozens of times for more. This requires great humility and trust 
in God's mercy. That person must find the temptation to say to himself, how many times I might, ask, might I confess this sin? There are many people, even the saints, who have waged a battle with their weaknesses, such as greed, lies, or impurity, for years. Sometimes it is only the experience of one's powerlessness, a kind of spiritual paralysis that can lead one to harm the self in the confessional. Only with God can I overcome the story of my life. And don't worry about the priest. You can confess behind the screen. You are confessing your sins. Try to Jesus. You encounter the living God within the confessional and Jesus offers his divine mercy. In the world, uh, say for example in a job interview, we like to present ourselves well. Confession is the opposite kind of situation. If you come to an interview and show your weaknesses, you should not get the job. In the sacrament of confession, the exact opposite. We come to confession to be performed badly. In confession, the worse that someone does, paradoxically, the better he actually performs. And here, no one will be scorned. Jesus invites us, come to me all you, all you who labor and are burdened and take my yoke upon your shoulders, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. One of my brother uh, Dominicans was sent on a mission to Belarus a number of years ago. It was, very, it was a very difficult assignment for any priest. Uh, the government was constantly watching his every move with constant surveillance and uh, wiretapping. The assignment seemed almost impossible given the circumstances and persecution of the church. We all were expecting him to write back how difficult everything is there. But much to our surprise, we received an unexpected letter. And he was happy because the people he served long for a shepherd and for the sacraments. Even though he experienced the cross in, a, in an extraordinary way, the Lord gave him the grace of being close at his side. It is true. Many times the one confession will not sort out our lives. But imagine by the prodigal son how the merciful Father ran out to meet him. So he runs out to meet you. The Father did not ask, ask the Son uh, when uh, he would return the money he uh, squandered or if he would never repeat the sin again. Rather, unexpectedly, the Father organizes a feast, puts new clothes on his Son, and celebrates his son's return to the father's house. The father only needs you to accept his invitation to come to him. No matter the circumstances, even if you try to come many times before, during this mission, he invites you and he waits for you. Always waiting. I think that uh, that's the second time the Father Merrick has preached in the United States ever, so <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> Thank you, Father Merrick. Father Merrick and I um, are from the Pontifical University of St. Thomas Aquinas. It's a pontifical university in Rome called the Angelicum. And it's named after St. Thomas Aquinas. I'm, by the way, I'm just giving a second, not a second homily, just to just the announcements about the mission, okay? So, um, like another homily. Okay, 
So, but we, uh, but today the church celebrates throughout the world the feast of, of the patron of our university, Saint Thomas Aquinas. <laughs> That's today. Now it's surprised because it's a Sunday, because the, the the days of the resurrection take precedence over other feast days. But if we were at home, we would be celebrating the feast of Saint Thomas Aquinas. So we're going to celebrate with you a little bit today. Okay. So thank you. We're very delighted because. <laughs> Um, Father, Father Mirak and I have noticed how I didn't say Marek, I said Mirak. <laughs> okay, that's his name, and of course your previous pastor was Marek, of course. So, um, but we are delighted to be here, we're very grateful to Father Sebastian and everybody, and um, uh, Father Mirak and uh, Father Mirak works in our administration, as do I, at our, at our university, and he's also a doctor of canon law, he teaches canon law at our university. So, um, you know, and di solito parliamo italiano, but here we're speaking English. <laughs> so, I was, I was, uh, he's doing great things, it's incredible. Uh, so, we're very, very grateful. I'm so happy he came with me. It's a nice break from him to get away from, you know, the, 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 the Italian world of chaos. <laughs> <laughs> It's, uh, it's, we love it, but it's, it's chaotic. Chaotico. Okay, so, anyway, the full, okay, in regard to the bulletin, as you grab that on the way out, we want, to, we want to make sure that every household grabs a bulletin, and if for some reason, uh, ushers, uh, there's not enough bulletins because this is a last mass, we do have the full schedule also in the back as well. But in the bulletin, in the schedule, on Tuesday night, there's an error. It's the, 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 the schedule is the same in the morning and the evening on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, just to be aware of that. The morning session is 9 o'clock after the 8.30, the regularly scheduled 8.30 Mass, and the evening session is 6.30. There is no Mass in the evening. It's the regular parish schedule, and these are mission talks that will take about 45 minutes. But it's a chance for you to go either in the morning or in the evening, and you still can follow the mission. So it's beautiful. Everything's in the bulletin, so please grab one of those. Um, okay? Yeah. But Father Merrick and I, obviously the Angelicum is, is, a, is it's like a giant seminary. We're educating, we have about 150 Dominicans that are students there from around the world, but the Dominicans are only a tenth of our student population. We have over a thousand students from over 100 countries and uh, the largest single population of, of students are actually from the United States. Okay, so, so it has a major impact on the church in the United States, and it rivals uh, any seminary in the United States, obviously. But uh, St. Thomas Aquinas, our Dominican all-star, uh, he's the common doctor of the church. He taught uh, very close to where we currently, the university is currently situated now, in 1265. So in the 13th century, St. Thomas Aquinas taught seminarians in Rome. And so today we continue that same venerable tradition under his patronage, which is his today, uh, with a systematic uh, thought of, of the church, which is required by canon law. If you're going to study for the priesthood, you must study the thought of St. Thomas Aquinas. It's, 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 a, it's a normative uh, type of systematic approach. So like, for example, I can't go to the University of Florida, uh, as much as beautiful as that campus is, do religious studies, you know, and become a priest, you can't do that. It has, it's a classical, systematic version, way of studying for philosophy and theology. Uh, our university has distinguished alumni, including uh, Father Karol Wojtyła from Poland, who later became Pope St. John Paul II, and it is doctor with us in 1948. And uh, also the venerable Fulton Sheen, some of you may know Fulton Sheen. So they both, uh, among the other all-star casts of, of saints throughout the world, we've also got, you know, blessings, we've got martyrs. They're, they've all, in fact, right now, we could, Father, Father Mirak could be teaching a future pope. We don't know that. So it's amazing, and actually there are 200 alumni, current alumni of our university, who are serving the church as bishops and cardinals throughout the, throughout the world. 
and a number of them right here in the United States, including Bishop Frank DeWay down in, uh, in Venice, Florida. We are, uh, perhaps what's most extraordinary for me in regard to our university, the reason I'm telling you this is because we are taking a second collection, just to be aware. <laughs> Full transparency, <laughs> okay? And, there, and there's envelopes actually on the sides of, if you could pass those down to people, uh, you can take that, that envelope home, uh, the check should be made out to the International Dominican Foundation or the Angelicum, not to the parish, please. Um, there's, also, there's also the blue, uh, the blue, uh, what do you call them? The blue uh, cards. And there's a QR code on there. I know the bishop doesn't want you to take it out of your cell phone, but you can, we'll, we'll have an exemption to that right now. You can take your cell phone out into a QR code and you can get, get in touch with us, or subscribe to our mailing list, or perhaps make a donation. You can even do that right now. It's very easy. Okay, but our, we're in our 23rd year of Eucharistic Adoration at the Angelico of Rome. Our students organize Eucharistic Adoration. We're in our 23rd year. So Father Merrick and I are delighted to bring a little bit of that spirituality here to you. Each one of the talks on tomorrow, in the morning at 9 o'clock, in the evening at 6.30 p.m., Will, will both take place in the presence of the exposed Blessed Sacrament, which is why we need altar servers if you're willing to come. The altar servers to help us with the incense and the bells and all that kind of stuff. If you're willing to do that, that would be fantastic. We do need more altar servers each day, but especially on Wednesday. Uh, and of course, this spirituality is nothing other than the spirituality of the Catholic Church, okay? But we are gonna be singing Eucharistic hymns, which you all know, You've probably heard them before, and they're, of course, in your, in your hymnals. So the Tantu Mergo, the O Salutaris, they're, they're Latin hymns. But they're hymns that were composed by none other than St. Thomas Aquinas, whose feast we celebrate today, universally in the church. It's amazing. So, so we're going to be using those hymns uh, during the, during, um, our, the mission uh, this uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. It's the same program in the morning or the evening. You can go to either one and still follow the mission. And again, they last about 45 minutes each session. So the Monday morning at 9 o'clock, Monday evening at 6.30. Then you can come on Tuesday morning at 9 o'clock. And then on Wednesday you can come in the evening. Because uh, it's, it's, it's very important, obviously, that um, the mission provides an extraordinary grace. I personally have done the mission now 25 times, roughly throughout the United States. And uh, we, we bring our professors from our university, we bring uh, students from our university, and we, bring, we even have alumni who are now priests, as well as religious priests, who help us with the mission. So we're delighted we've done it across the country. We just did it in Ocala, Florida, at Blessed Trinity in Ocala. And uh, we had some extraordinary things happen. We had over a thousand people. And I'd like to just ask uh, the music director, Scott, just say a few words, Scott, real, real, real briefly about what you saw in Ocala on the last night of the mission, which is Wednesday. It's the main event at 6.30 here. Just real quick. Okay, uh, thank you, Father. So my wife, Philomena, and I decided to go to the mission. It was very lovely. Uh, I had no idea that it was going to be a little bit of a rehearsal for what we're going to do here. But uh, basically, uh, plenty of uh, beautiful Eucharistic adoration. Um, the fathers were, were very nice. Uh, the people attended. It's definitely been worth your while to come. And of course, we had uh, uh, confessions that were going on. Because we're going to be confessions going on this time, too. And uh, lots of healing. So. Uh, if you have anything that you need to bring to the Lord, it would be a great time to do it. Thank you. So there's an extraordinary grace. But in order to receive that grace, we want to invite you. It's the, the, the grace is contingent upon each and every person in the parish going to confession. That's why we're here. You heard his, you heard his talk. Okay? And because the, the great, this, this is Father Mark Merrick said, you don't know us, and we don't know you. When the mission's done, we're out of here. We're back to Rome, unless you come visit us in Rome. We're not going to see you again, okay? So this is your golden opportunity, okay? Wives, elbow your husbands who haven't been to confession for a few years, okay? You know who you are. Fear not. Fear not. In the, in the bulletin, 
we brought with us, you'll see it, it's in, so every, every household takes one bulletin, you will have the full examination of conscience that we wrote. We wrote the examination of conscience that we brought with us. So we hope, and if, and if the bulletins run out, we've got extra copies back there. So we hope that you'll take it home and you'll come back to the mission. Because we, we have extra times for confessions before, during, and after. So there's plenty of chances for people to go to confession. We're, and then on Wednesday, as Scott said, we're going to have a bunch of extra priests here. So it'll be an opportunity, and the confessions will start. All the schedules in the bulletin. It's also on the website. Just go to the website, and you'll click, click straight through to our, our website in Rome, and you'll see all the information. Um, during the mission, there's, we're going to be praying special prayers for the sick. And so uh, there's, there's extraordinary prayers also for, for couples whose marriages are on the rocks, families that are divided, families that have gone off the deep end. Right? You, you all know who you are. We live in tough times, right? We know that. Okay? It's very difficult. We live in tough, tough times today. So what can we do? Okay? And you may say, oh, well, Father, you know, my, my husband's deceased or whatever. Well, guess what? Bring a picture of those whom you love. Bring a, bring a picture of those who died. Bring a picture of those who you know who've gone off the deep end that you've been praying for for so long. Okay, we, we were delighted to discover when we went to the shrine of Our Lady of La Leche in St. Augustine, and your beautiful, beautiful shrine here, that Our Lady of La Leche is famous for people who are praying for people, for their children, for grandchildren. What a beautiful, beautiful image. Because we always tell people during the mission, we're going to talk a lot about this, when you poop for the benefits, okay, we have the rosary, you know? When you pray the rosary, put the rosary around the person that you're praying for. Imagine the rosary going around the person as you pray for them. It's very powerful. It's a powerful image. One of our Dominicans who uh, is a, um, their chaplains at the, the largest hospitals, in New York City, there was a man who was dying. Uh, he was 30 years old, 30 something years old, and, a, and a, um, he called for the priest. And he had tattoos up and down his arms, you know, kind of a rough life. And his father, and one of our priests asked him, he said, what, what is it that convinced you to call for, for us to come? And he said, he said, when I left the church years ago, my mother had been praying for me ever since I left. And she died five years ago. No idea the effect of your prayers for those who you love. You have no idea the impact of your prayers for those who you know have gone off the deep end. The challenges we face, the divisions that we face in this country, they are unparalleled. I've never, I mean, the divisions, it's unbelievable. What can we do? God has a plan. And in the end, my immaculate heart will triumph. We're going to put everything into the hands of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Our Lady of La Leche, and she is, it's absolutely beautiful. So, so bring pictures, come to the mission, and we're going to put, we have some beautiful prayers, and if you sign up in the back, we'll send you those prayers, along with some photos of our, of our travels, and, and a final message, as well as other information, we'll send them to you. We also have with us the miraculous oil from the Shrine of St. Joseph in Montreal. So... This uh, miraculous oil we brought with us. St. Joseph is the patron of the church. He's the protector of families. So we're going to be praying for each and every person to be anointed with this sacramental during the Eucharistic healing service, right before we bring our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament to each and every person for a moment of close adoration. The mission culminates in a beautiful, beautiful Eucharistic healing service. Okay? Monday night, it's divine providence. Tuesday night, it's the divine indwelling, how God dwells in the tabernacle of our soul. If we're in a state of grace, which is why confession is so important. Okay, ours is the only religion in the world that claims that we bear the presence of God within the tabernacle of our soul as a guest. And the third night, which is the Eucharistic healing service, and again, it's the same in the morning, I mean, simplify it, but the main event will be on Wednesday evening at 6.30 p.m. And um, uh, it's on the real presence of Jesus and the gift of the Eucharist that we're celebrating now and how Jesus 
heals families, heals marriages, heals divisions. We've seen extraordinary things. So please spread the word. Um, we also want to have the mission be a little evangelical, a little, you know, get in the Catholic sense of the word, it's our word basically, okay? Just so that you know that, so, okay? But the, but the um, uh, we have these little in, in, invite cards in the back, okay? So I want to challenge each and every person to take one of these cards. And do you know somebody who is suffering? Do you know somebody who's having problems in their lives? Do you know somebody who's in need of God's mercy? By the way, you do not have to be a Catholic to come to the mission or even the Eucharistic healing service on Wednesday. Anybody can come. Pass this card along. Take one card and pass it along to somebody that you know who's in need of God's mercy. Now, families that have got little kids, those, those little kids are your ticket to go first on Wednesday night. You don't have to wait, okay? Anybody who's got students, you can bring your kids, you get to go first, okay? We also, also the sick as well. The sick, you know, so to those who are really sick, they will be the first ones to go. And we're gonna, it's a chance for the parish to come together to pray in a special way. Um, okay, obviously we are very, very grateful. We still need some more servers on, on Wednesday morning, and also we can bring, maybe use more on Wednesday evening as well. So please, please come and please spread the word. Uh, we are very, very grateful. Thank you for your generosity in the second collection, and thank you especially to this parish, and may uh, the presence of God come in our lives. Let us stand on and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, may you have a
presence of God to permeate everything in the world today and in our lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, your Son, Jesus Christ, has shown us the way back to you. Hear our petitions, and we give them to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you very much for your generosity during the second collection. You could be helping a future, to educate a future world. Our hymn to the gifts is number 574, I Will Choose Christ.
And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim.
pray you will graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. To be with the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I leave you my peace, I leave you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. We begin to keep his bread and our father would follow. Thank you. 
let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O oh Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, through faith may ever increase, through Christ our Lord. Schedules on the website, examinations of the conscience in the back, invite cards to personally invite somebody to come. We hope to see you this week. And hospitality in the parish hall after mass, please join us. We'll be over there if you want to talk to us. Talk to Father Mary in Polish or Italian. <laughs> Italian. <laughs> you are the utmost of all. The, 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 the Lord be with you. And Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorify the Lord by your life. Let us sing Beatitudes, number 757.